So in the previous version of this course, uh, there was a small bit of information around floating point numbers, specifically as they were implemented in MIPS. Uh, today I want to go through uh, some more detail about exactly how that works so that you have some more clear understanding of exactly how the encoding works uh, so that you can make informed decisions about <laughs> how and when to use floating point numbers. Uh, and, and so that it makes more sense when you're actually trying to implement this stuff. Most of these details are hidden from programmers. Mostly you say, I'm going to use a float, and that's what I'm going to use. Um, but as we saw in the previous videos, there are some challenges with using floats um, in terms of the accuracy of the representation, um, in terms of errors creeping in, these kind of things. And also it takes a lot longer to process uh, a floating point number than it does an integer. So again, if you can use integers, use integers. And if you can't, then here are how floating point numbers actually work. So in this set of notes, we're going to review converting from binary to decimal, see how to convert from binary to decimal when floating point numbers are involved, and then uh, build the hardware out that is actually going to accomplish the, the calculations between floating point numbers. So um, as a reminder, binary numbers are based on a numerical system where the radix is 2. So this is 2 to the power of n being the fundamental base unit for the way that we represent our numbers. Just like in base 10, it's 10 to the power of something. So a regular representation, 386, is 3 times 10 to the 2 plus 8 times 10 to the 1 plus 6 times 10 to the 0. And in binary, uh, 7 is 1 times 2 to the 2 plus 1 times 2 to the 1 plus 1 times 2 to the 0. And then the question becomes, what do you do with numbers that are less than 1? Well, these are now fractional. It's easy to extend this kind of a formula from increasing powers of 2 back past 0 to decreasing powers of 2. So now instead of 2, 4, 8, 16, you have 1 half, 1 quarter, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth all multiplied by 1 or 0 depending on whether or not there is the presence or absence of value in that place location. So 0 0.1 in binary is a half, is 0.5 in decimal, 0 0.01 in binary is a quarter, and 0 0.001 is an eighth, etc. Now, how do we find those numbers? <clears throat> in converting from an from a integer to a binary number, we do repeated divisions by 2. So it makes sense that to convert from a uh, decimal number or a number less than 1 to binary, we're going to do repeated multiplications by 2. So this is going to be the first thing we actually try to accomplish, and I'll show you exactly how that works so that we can have uh, this idea going forward of if I give you a number that's in base 10 in fraction or, or decimal representation, you can convert that number to base 2 in fractional or decimal notation. Then we'll figure out how to actually represent that in our standard floating point con uh, concept. So let's take some random number. Let's take uh, a number that is, well, first of all, say something like 12.6. Uh, as, as an example, right? Now, what we do is we split this in half. The 12 is easy. We know that 12 is 8, right, plus 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 which is 1, 1, 0, 0. That's great. Now, if we were going to do this using our uh, process, if we couldn't grab those powers of 2 from our brains, then we would do our repeated divisions by 2, right? The other way to do this is 12 divided by 2 is 6, remainder 0. 6 divided by 2 is 3, remainder 0. 3 divided by 2 is well, that's 1, remainder 1. Right? And then 1 divided by 2 is 0, remainder 1. And then we read from the bottom up. And that's our 1, 1, 0, 0. So that's how we convert from a decimal, or sorry, an integer to a binary number. Now, if we want to convert from a fractional number, 0 0.6, we're going to do the same thing except do it in reverse. So we're going to do multiplications instead of divisions. And then we're going to read from the top down instead of the bottom up. When do we stop? Let's find out. So the, the key here is we have to split it in half. And so we've got it split it in half. So now the second half is 0 0.6. And we're going to multiply by 2 times 2 is, well, 0 0.6 times 2 is what? Well, it's 12, right? Uh, but 1.2. 1.2. 
Now, this is the place where we have to stop and think about what we're actually computing. So now what we've got is a number that's bigger than uh, 1, right, 1 1.2, but we can't use that in the context of multiplying by 2 a number smaller than 1, so that 1 is the part that we're going to keep as our first binary number, right? This indicates that if the number was bigger than a half, right, we multiply by 2, now we've got that 1, and that means a half needs to be part of that value. That 1 means a half is part of that value. If it was smaller than a half and we multiplied by 2, we wouldn't get any value in that 1 half spot. So now we do the same thing over and over again. So now we take the 0 0.2, we multiply by 2, we get 0 0.4. That means there wasn't anything in the 1 quarters space, because 1 quarter multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, if, there was, if the number was bigger than a quarter, it would have given us value in that spot. Since it's less than a quarter, right? 0.2 is less than 0.25, now we get nothing in that spot. And we go again. Now we say 0 0.4 times 2 is 0 0.8. All right, so there wasn't anything in the 1 in the one eighth category. Now we take 0 0.8 times 2, and we get 1.6. Well, now we have something bigger than that again, right? So we're measuring these numbers down. We're 1, 0, 0, 1. Uh, what about 0 0.6? 0 0.6. Oh, now that's interesting, isn't it? Let's look at this. 0 0.6 times 2 is, well, it's 1.2 again. And what we've recognized is that, in fact, we've got a repeating number, which is OK. And you'll find that there are some numbers that repeat in base 10 that don't repeat in base 2, and some numbers that don't repeat in base 10 that do repeat in base 2. Right? One third repeats in base 10. We'll have a look and see if it repeats in base 2 or not. This is a thing you can explore, is what numbers repeat in one base versus repeat in another base. 0 0.6 doesn't repeat in base 10, but it does repeat in base 2. And that's interesting. And we'll find that numbers that don't repeat in base 10 sometimes do repeat in base 2, because base 10 has this uh, is, is the, the factorization of the radix gives you 2 and 5. Now, 2 works well with binary, 5 doesn't. And so we'll see how those things go. So let's pick a number that we think has a good chance of actually not repeating, and we'll see how that one goes as well. Remember, numbers in base 2, fractional numbers in base 2, are going to be composed of a half plus a quarter plus an eighth plus a sixteenth, right? And fractional numbers in base 10 are composed of a tenth plus a hundredth plus a thousandth. So we want to pick a number in base 10 that might be a non repeating number terminating number in base 2. So let's pick something like, well, a half is too easy. Uh, let's pick 0. Point, well, a quarter, 0. 6, 0. 0.625. It's a bit of an artificial number, and I happen to know that that's going to uh, work out nicely, but I may need my calculator for that. So let's just see uh, what we might be able to do for that. Um, mm -mm -mm. So let's see what 0.625 is in this process. So we take 0.625, we multiply it by 2. Well, 0.25 times 2 is 0.5, and 0.6 is 1.2. 0.625 times 2 oops, is 1.25. Okay? So that sort of makes sense. And then again, we take the 1, and that's going to be our first number in our binary number. And then we take 0.25 multiply by 2, we get 0 0.5, and then we get 0 0.5 times 2 equals 1.0. And now we see how we can terminate this example. If we get a number where the fractional part is 0, we're done. We don't have to do anything more because 0 times 2 is 0, and we would go on forever. So we read from the top down, and we get, we have to start with 0. Point. 0. 0.101 is our binary fraction representation of this number 0.625. Let's confirm. It's always good to confirm. So remember, this is going to be 2 to the 0, and this is going to be 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 3. So 2 to the negative 1 is a half, and there's no quarters, and then there's an eighth, and a half is... 0.5 and an 8 is 0.125, and we add those together, we get 0.625, which is what we expect. 
So now we have a pretty good idea of how to convert fractional binary numbers, or sorry, fractional um, base 10 numbers into fractional binary numbers. Next, we're going to see how we then put those together into some sort of a representation that allows the decimal point to float around.